are back with our first guest of the day, Brian Johnson of the Northern Indiana Community Foundation. Thanks for having me. Hey, no problem. I always love having you in here. It's a good day. Yes. So, got a lot going on. So um, we'll have a guest with us here in a minute via telephone. So yes. the magic of telephone and internet and cell phones and all the fun stuff you do with this electronics in here. Yeah. It's impossible, so appreciate that. Hey, so, no problem. Um, we'll be talking to Lindsay Bartz here in a few minutes um, about the Summer Parks program. A lot of excitement about that coming back. So. Oh, yeah. A few things we've got going on right now. Um We've been talking about um, the matching funds that we have ava- available through Lilly Endowment. Yes. Appreciate Lilly Endowment's um, support of our local community and um, things going on. So um, we have matching dollars two for one, so you can triple your dollars. Ah. You give a dollar, we get two from Lilly Endowment, turns into three dollars. So um, these donations can um, be used towards community funds. So our goal is to raise Mm -hmm. $375,000, be matched with $750,000 from Lilly Endowment. Mm -hmm. That'll turn into about fifty dollars or $60,000 additional community funds each year. So very exciting. So we're very appreciative um, towards Lilly Endowment, um, supporting community foundations and helping us make great grants like the Summer Parks Program that we're going to talk about here in a minute. Um, That opportunity is available um, until we reach our $375,000 goal or through the end of 2025. Okay. That being said, we're over halfway there already. So we'll see if we last till the end of 2024 with matching dollars. So if you're interested in that, interested in learning more about community funds or how they work or um, possibly supporting one or setting up a named community fund, we'd love to talk to you about that. So um, talking about grants, we have a couple of grant applications available. Of course, um, our community support and impact grants don't have a deadline, so please feel free to apply for those at any point. But we do have a couple Liberty Town and the Kiwana Union Township Endowment Funds are both accepting grant applications Mm -hmm. um, for projects that specifically serve those communities. Um, We do have a deadline on those, so May 6th is the deadline, so have a little bit of time, but um, get those applications in. Um, Those are funds that support projects specifically within Liberty Township and Kiwani Union Township and um, a few hundred dollars to $2,500 in that range um, for grants. So um, it's been exciting to see some of the things that have happened, thinking about things that have supported like the parks in both communities, um, libraries, um, fire departments, VFWs, um, organizations like that, some some youth league things um, are all exciting things that have happened through those funds. So deadline's yes. May 6th if you're interested in that. NICF.org and click on the Fulton County Grants page and that will get you to the area with the application. Okay. A couple of recent grants that we've given. Of course, we just mentioned the Summer Parks Program. We were able to provide um, a couple of grants, one from our community funds and one from our ambassadors clubs of former board members that um, get together a couple times a year and provide support for organizations, provided about $5,000 for the Summer Parks Program. And another grant that we provided was for the Compassionate Health Center. Yes. For um, $1,000 from our Ambassadors Club, the Compassionate Health Center, an organization serving folks with um, that do not have adequate insurance coverage with health care needs. Um, and it's interesting, They this is an organization that Every time I walk in the door, I think these folks are literally saving lives. Yes, they are. So it's very neat to see how that happens. Um, The other thing that I wanted to mention is this is the time of year that we get to go around to different organizations and drop off distribution checks. So maybe keep an eye on the Community Foundation's Facebook page for some fun photo ops Mm -hmm. teaser. There may or may not be pictures of dogs on there in the near future. So (laughs) dog lovers unite. Yes. Available for adoption. Option. So um, really exciting to see that. But our Facebook page, Northern Indiana Community Foundation, of course, that's um, part of all three of our organizations, Fulton, Miami, and Stark Counties. So um, really exciting with that. So um, 
Those are some of the things that I have to share, and I wanted to leave plenty of time for our guests. Oh, yeah. So I don't know if we can bring in um, Lindsay Bartz, who is the, correct me if I'm wrong, Lindsay, but is the director of the Summer Parks Program. Yes, that's correct. Well, welcome. Um, we appreciate oh, yeah. you working with the Parks Department and the Parks Department providing this program again. It's been a few years since this has been offered in Rochester. So I guess the first question that I'd have for you is, what is the Summer Parks Program? Yeah, um, thanks. And I also have um, an assistant director, Abby, Abigail Cronin, who works in the school department or the school system. Um, she is going to be helping me too. Um, but the Summer Parks program has been going on for a really long time. I got to be uh, involved in it when I was uh, in high school. But it uh, takes kids from all over the city, and we do a lot of park stuff at the city park and then we also uh, get to different areas around the community like the bowling alley the pool and it's just a way for kids to enjoy the summer and to be outdoors and um, and it's really awesome because we don't um it's just a great way for kids to have something to do during the summer and uh this year What's nice is that the summer or the parks board decided that they wanted to make it free to um, make it more accessible to any to everyone. Um, so uh, it's it is free, and then thanks to um, the foundation, they were able to help make that possible um, by providing uh, the funds for all of the educational materials and the activity materials that we'll be using throughout the year. So um, that is anywhere from like we'll be doing tie dye t shirts. So um, that that those funds helped provide that. Um, all the kids bowling will be completely covered, so that's awesome. Um, that includes shoe rental, and it's kind of nice because these some of these kids have never got to go to the uh, to the pool or have never got to go to the bowling alley. So uh, it's a really good opportunity to explore Rochester and then also the parks that they have in the town. Yeah, well, neat. It- We'll talk a little bit about some of those activities, but um, give us a little idea of who can participate in this program. What students are you looking for to participate in this program? Yeah, so um, we are looking for anyone between ages 6 to 12, and uh, we'll be breaking them up into age groups. So there'll be four different colors that we're going to be dispersing uh, the kids into. Um and those numbers will be, you know, debate, the number groups will be based on how many kids would we get um, that sign up for the program. So far, we actually have 60 kids that are already signed up. All right. And we just launched that sign up the week before spring break. Okay. So it's kind of cool that we haven't even been in sesh- in school session and we're already three quarters of the way to our capacity for being able to or for, for signing up. So if there are any parents listening um, or I'm sure there are but hurry and get your, your uh, child signed up as long as they're between 6 and 12 um, they're welcome to sign up but we're also looking for high school or camp leaders we've historically called them a I think his, uh, high school leaders. Um, we're kind of calling it more of a camp this year. So we're looking for camp leaders, and that's going to be anybody between sophomore and senior year. And we have Bryn Wilson, who is an eighth grade English language arts teacher at Rochester High School. That's kind of the liaison for uh, the recruitment for those. So if you have any questions about your high school student being able to sign up and help out at the parks program contacting the schools they have all the information um but also contacting city hall they know to get in contact with me and we're just looking for uh, high school kids to help lead our groups but then also obviously the six through 12 kids too yeah that's awesome give us an idea of the dates and times that this program will start and run throughout the summer 
Yeah, so the program will run from, uh, it starts on June 10th, uh, that's a Monday, and it will run until June 28th, and on June 28th, we're going to be having a community carnival, so we'll have a face painting, which is also covered in the grant, there will be some, um, I think, I think a bouncy house of some sort and then um water balloons uh we'll have cotton candy and uh do, be doing all sorts of activities so we're uh, looking for community members to come out and join us on the 28th to kind of celebrate the end of uh, the parks program because this parks program has pulled so many people together um we're going to woodlawn this year and doing community service that was another big thing that we wanted to integrate into the program was um kind of our theme this year is called community explorers and so we're going uh to do some community work like i mentioned at the uh, woodlawn hospital where they're going to be uh, picking up sticks around the trail um because a lot of people walk on that trail and picking up sticks is um i remember it's one of my favorite childhood uh, memories but also they're going to be learning uh from the purdue extension office because um they partnered together with woodlawn to have a community garden and last year they created they um grew over 600 pounds of produce that they ended up donating i think to matthew's market brian you might be able to know a little bit more about that i think there are multiple pantries in the area that they donated to yeah oh okay that makes sense um but they're like purdue extension has been doing an awesome job of partnering with community members to um, scale those uh community gardens so they're going to learn and uh weed and water the community garden do some like i mentioned do some community service work around the hospital but then also we're because we're doing that we are a monarch town now um we're going to be going across the street to the butterfly garden where kim melandis the uh plant lady extraordinaire we'll be talking about native plants pollinators all that stuff and we're also going to be using the story walk that the fulton county leadership group put in place um at woodlawn too to learn about um the monarchs and um pollinators and um and things and then the la- the other thing that we're going to be doing this community service oriented is what we're calling art in the park and art in the park is going to be uh painting the trash can at the city parks um so we're trying to uh raise awareness again for the native plants and the pollinators that we're trying to bring back and kind of rehabilitate in our area um so we'll be uh, providing uh that art art uh in the park experience as well well, it sounds sounds like a good group of activities. We're talking with um, Lindsay Bartz, who is going to be the director of the Summer Parks Program this year. Um, my next question you've already answered was some of the planned activities. Sounds like there's a lot of fun. I think Paul was trying to sign up as we were talking here to see if he could get in on this <laughs> thing. But. Bob, please come. This. We'll love, oh, everybody would love to have you there. Yeah, and I actually forgot the times for that are going to be from 745 until 1215. And we will be having a group of high school kids that will walk the kids over to breakfast at the high school. And the cool thing is, is because we are able to um, partner with the school and the library, there will be lunch afterwards if they want to go to lunch too. But our programming will last from 745 to 1215 and a part of those times we'll have um community well, everybody will come all the kids will get dropped off we'll play hide and seek and manitou mountain games and then we'll convene as a big huge group and where we're going to be com- when we convene as a huge group a big thing that abby and i want to do is teach all of the favorite camp songs like down by the banks of the hanky pank where the bullfrogs jump from bank to banky like that song or little sound Sally Walker, Abby and I feel like we want these kids to be singing these songs at recess when they're out there, and we want to pass these songs down so they stay alive. So we're going to be doing that, and then we'll uh, transition into a series of rotations where they're going to be learning uh, how to play frisbee golf, how to do dog or play dodgeball, how to 
doing three-on-three basketball tournaments, but also doing an array of mindfulness art activities. So I already mentioned that we'll be doing tie-dyeing. We'll also be making um, mindfulness bracelets um, to, you know, uh, you know, trying to kind of tap into uh, some mental health aspects. Uh, so, you know, all of these um, art activities are inspired by research-based mindfulness practices to help, you know, uh, reg- learn how to regulate our emotions. Yeah. So some of those will include, um, yes, the, mi- the, mon- the mindfulness bracelet, but also um, positivity rocks, making these calm bottles where uh, my students, uh, they love, I have these glitter bottles that have water they're water and glitter and they love to tip them upside down and watch the glitter like settle back down and then get all crazy um so we'll be doing those types of activities and then um just a lot of art stuff that we're going to be doing that i'm super excited about that we'll also be integrating nature so we're going to be uh growing little sunflower plots around the park so really look out for those this summer even past the parks program because all the kids are going to be making these little like sunflower rooms that you can go into and then also painting pots and then planting pollinators that they're going to be able to take home. So pulling nature, art, and activity all together is what we're planning on with those activities. Sounds like you got a great group of activities going on. So if somebody's listening and has a child or grandchild possibly that's interested in participating, how do they go about registering them? Yeah, so a couple of different ways. Uh, Next week, we are going to be sending some flyers home to fill up those last 40 spots that we have because we are looking about at 100 kids that we're trying to get signed up for that. Um, So they'll be getting a flyer from um, Columbia. Uh, So that's one way, the paper form. But also, um, the Jana at the Rochester School Corporation posted on Facebook, and I imagine there will be another post too. There's a Google form that's getting filled out as well. So that's on social media, but all the school corporate, the whole Rochester School Corporation has all that information. So if you just call them, you're able to um, get the information, but you can also um, email me at lindsay at theladybugfoundation.org and I can shoot it over to you as well. I've had quite a few um, parents reach out with questions already. Um, So those are the ways that they can register their kids. And then also for the camp leaders, like I mentioned, Bryn Wilson over at the uh, Rochester High School is can be contacted. Again, me too, but Ra- Bryn is really kind of leading the charge on recruiting all of the high school leaders. Yeah, well, that's awesome. And and if somebody's listening and says, hey, I'd like to get involved in helping with this program, are there ways that they can do that as well? Yeah, yeah. We have, like I mentioned, we're already partnering with Purdue Extension, Woodlawn, the foundation, the park sport has been amazing, Um, the bowling alley, the city pool, all these different um, folks are are helping out with it. It's not just a one-hand show by any means, Um, but yeah, reach out to me, Lindsay, at the ladybug foundation.org and i will definitely um get in contact with you and figure out ways that we can bring more community members or excuse me community explorers into the into the program yeah well neat well we've been speaking with Lindsay bartz Lindsay is going to be leading the summer parks program give us a reminder of those dates again and what ages are eligible to participate it's June 10th through June 28th, uh, 6 through 12 for signing up uh, for to be a camper. And then to be a camp leader, it's sophomore to seniors. And the parks program will run half day from 745 until 1215. Well, on behalf of the community and all of the youth and leaders that will participate in this program thank you for um to you and the parks board for bringing this program back we're looking forward to seeing some fun things some cool trash cans and i'm going to keep my eye out for the sunflowers those will probably be blooming after the program is done but um and and some of the activities that you've got going on i I think both me and paul are going to try and figure out how we can be less than 12 years old so we can participate in this program yes (laughs) sounds like fun so 
Well, thank you. Well, for- thank you guys so much for helping me spread the word. Yeah, thanks for joining us this morning, and we'll look forward to hearing all the great fun that is had by all through the Summer Parks program this year. So, yes, Oh, um, yeah. Yes, yes. Looking forward to it. So, well, wrapping up, um, a few things that we mentioned, um, talking about our two-for-one match for community funds. If folks are interested in that, we'd love to talk to you. Um, Liberty Township and the Kiwani Union Township Endowment Fund grant application deadlines coming up on May 6th. Um, and probably next month we'll be talking a little bit about scholarships since it is that yes. time of year, kind of yes. an exciting time that we get to celebrate that. Um, but if you have questions about anything we talked about um, today, by all means, check us out online, nicf.org. You can find us on Facebook, Northern Indiana Community Foundation. Give us a call here in Rochester, 574-224-3223, or stop by our office at 227 East 9th Street here in Rochester. We'd love to talk to you about any ideas or um, visions or questions that you have for making our community a better place to live, work, and play. Yeah. All right. Uh, again, thank you, Lindsay, for joining us, uh, taking a little bit of time out of your day to talk to us about the uh, Summer Parks program. And, uh, Brian, thank you so much for uh, coming in and talking uh, about the Community Foundation. And I look forward to uh, doing it again next month. Thanks for having us. Thank you.